Greetings and welcome everyone. It's All You Can Geek Gamecast episode 688 miles per hour. Did I do it better that time? Sorry. Mm. Uh, I'm your host, Jim Gass, joined by, I know it's cheesy, uh, joined <laughs> by Mike Sanini. What's up? <laughs> Come on, you fine side. Ahoy! And Tony Coconut. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, just trying no, to throw a curveball. I want to I throw, guess, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. It wasn't, uh, wasn't my favorite Christopher Lloyd impression, but it was all right. Yeah, it was better than my first one on the movie cast. So I, as I was saying, and I was like, oh, I got to do this. And then I was doing it this time. I'm like, I'm going to do this a little more like Christopher Lloyd. Uh, but all right, well, yeah, welcome, folks, to the movie, ca- uh, movie cast, game cast. We are live on Twitch starting Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock. We already did the movie cast. Uh, if you miss any of these live broadcasts, all of our content's over on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe uh, so you get notified. Uh, and give us a like, too. We like to get those. Li- we like the likes, right? We like, like the likes. Yeah. Like, like a like. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And leave us a comment. Good or bad? Leave this comment. I, we enjoy we enjoy conversation, so uh, we invite it. Anyways, thanks guys. Here we go. Gamecast. What have you been up to? Um, I'm gonna hear. I think we're gonna hear a lot about Final Fantasy VII right now. I think. Yeah. Corey. Mm-hmm. Tony. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to kick us off, and Mike and I can finish up with like a dragon a little bit. <laughs> uh, sure. so, so guys. Uh, well, Tony, I was actually Corey, go on. Okay. under the weather like Saturday and Sunday, so I. Okay. Hardly did anything, unfortunately. Oh, so bad you didn't get to play it. Oh, I hate when that happens. But, like I like being sick, but not so sick you can't. Right. Play. I, you yeah, can't even do you. anything. Oh. It's like, ugh. But um, and it sucks because I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like this weekend. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to be playing this game. Yeah. Uh, but I did get to chapter four in it. Oh, so that's, that's decently farther than I thought based on what you just said. <laughs> well, because I was like, as soon as I felt better, I'm like, all right, I'll just <laughs> let's see this as much as possible. Okay. Oh yeah, I got into chapter four, uh, and yeah, it's I mean it's pretty amazing. It's like just picking up where you left off, and you're just thrown into this town, and like there's so much to do already. You're like, oh my gosh, kind of overwhelmed a little bit because it's been a little while since seven, and so you still have to kind of get back into the swing of things. And so I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna go through all the tutorials and see like what I need to do and. Then you get caught up in this card game that's out there, and you're like, "Oh, I should probably play this card game." And so I'm playing this card game and trying to find all these people to play this card game against, and like not even doing these other things. And you get distracted by these other people. It's just like so many things going on constantly. But uh, as far as like the, the the game goes and the flow of the game, uh, it's been very, very, um, very much like what I was hoping the game would be. Right. So everything I expected, everything I was hoping for. It's Mm -hmm. met those expectations, and in some areas, it's even exceeded those expectations, uh, because you're you're getting your party like immediately. You have your party, your level. You're already leveled up essentially to a point where you don't feel like oh, I'm starting from scratch or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so you're just getting to go out and do things, and and you know fight monsters and start to go towards this you know mission of um, or mystery of what's going on with you know Cloud and his memories and stuff like that and i am i do want to ask you tony about like the opening sequence mm-hmm. with like the graphic the last game ends and this game starts and then the jump mm-hmm. like there's like a gap i'm confused what happened there ah like, so yes the gap is you had to play intergrade which was the dlc uh, for i did uh, not play intergrade yeah. i didn't either i just you can there's um they didn't, they didn't recap it i thought they would recap that at least then no because like it's difficult right because like if they made it too mandatory, you don't really, you're gonna burn a lot of bridges with people being like, "What the heck," you know. But mm-hmm. you know, if you don't make it too like enough mandatory, then people are like, "Well, I don't need to buy this and play this." Um, what I did was, uh, I mean, it's only four hours long, so if you want to go back and play it at some point, um, otherwise, I would just suggest there's um, a video I can link it to. Right before the game came out, I watched um, like two half hour videos of this guy just summarizing Recapping. the story. Yeah, like yeah. on both. Okay, videos. I mean that's probably what I would just. Yeah, because I mean, like, you don't really need to do the gameplay. It's just basically Mm -hmm. you're in Intergrade. um, Yuffie, as an emissary of Wukai, gets sent on a mission to Midgar. Um, And stuff happens, right? Stuff happens. Yeah. Um, um, It's mostly centered around her, but they, you know, they show you a little bit about what Cloud and the gang are up to as well. So, okay. Cool. But yeah, as for me, I mean, I've been playing. I put an ungodly amount of hours in this game already. I keep um, seeing people post hours. I'm just like, holy shit, this game is huge. Yeah, I want to say, I think I'm at like 
twenty something right now, late twenties. Um, okay, I think I'm at five and a half. So, oh, you're blitzing through it. Then you're not. Are you not doing the side content and stuff? Uh, no, I was like trying. At first, I was, but then I'm like, I'm just gonna just get through these tutorial missions and see where I'm. And then all of a sudden, I was like, wait, I'm at chapter four already. How did I get here? Yeah, like chapter. F I'm only chapter six or seven, I think. And one of the chapters is like basically an hour long. Uh, I mean, I just got like I just finished three and like. I, I mean, four now. Are you in Junai? I think. Or... Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in that first area, um, the grasslands. Mm -hmm. was, cause... Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of it's not uncovered for me. <laughs> okay. That, that makes more sense. Because, <laughs> like, the thing is, you know, I really wanted to see how they evolved the gameplay. Because, you know, uh, Remake, mm -hmm. uh, for as good as it was, you know, the shortcomings there was it was very linear, right? Be and, and that makes sense, right? Because yeah. in the original game, that sequence it was. was only a couple hours I, long. It, and it was very linear. Right. We weren't in the open world yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they had to be like, oh, how do we make a worthwhile RPG experience out of this? We need to add a lot of new stuff. And, you know, you can't really um, deviate from, you know, the critical path here, really. Um, so I was interested in how they handled Rebirth's open world. Um, and it was really, really fantastic. Um, and <laughs> such a stark comparison to 16, which you all know I really did not like. Mm -hmm. I missed uh, you, yeah. Because there was just yeah. nothing... There's no reason to explore the world, and I didn't have any, you know, intrinsic reason to either. I was like, well, if you're not going to put meaningful items or interesting, you know, things for Quests me to see, like, whatever, yeah. what's the point? Like, why am I just fucking wasting my time kind of guy? Whereas this, it's, um, you know, on the opposite side, where, you know, it's probably not perfect, you know, if I have to think about, um, you know, something like uh, Breath of the Wild or Shades of the Kingdom, where it's like, there's stuff to do, like, every, you know, X amount of feet or something like that. But it's definitely in that right direction where it's like you could see like a tower and kind of like Assassin's Creed style, mm -hmm. you go to the tower, you activate it, and it's like cool, other things and have unlocks more there. right things. And yeah. then you know, on your way to one of those things, you'll probably see something else. And it's like, okay, so that's fun, right? Because um, And then you're building levels towards those like Right. And they give you the world. reasons. Yeah, they give right. you reasons to, to go to these spots mm -hmm. because not only do you get things from doing it, but like there's this uh, dude Chadley who's like, Oh, I'll reward you for um, exploring the world and helping me, you know, fill out my database and stuff like that, and then he'll give you rarer materia that uh, is quite beneficial uh, for you to have in your party. So the first mm -hmm. zone, I just kind of 100% critical it. I was just like, nice. You know, I'm not sure how I will with the other zones, but at least for this first yeah. one, I just want to experience it. My thought was like, I'm gonna, I'll get back to that. <laughs> get back to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I didn't. I didn't want to understand the second area at all because I was like, ah, oh, you know what? You know, there, uh, there are certain things I like that I'm like, okay, I don't mind doing this. And there are other things I'm like, eh, you know, I can mm -hmm. kind of whatever and stuff like that. But um, gameplay is great. They really refine uh, remakes, uh, combat. Uh, a little tougher because the enemies definitely hit a little bit harder and require mm -hmm. a bit more strategy. There are already a couple enemies where, like, I just got rocked the other day um, with, like, a, not, like, boss, but, like, a elite enemy or something like that and they just killed me like three times in a row i'm like what am i doing wrong here and i just like had to completely load up like change my loadout and stuff like that and i was like okay all right all right okay that it's happened like... to me once because i was like i just i don't really pay attention to my health like like keep keeping myself <laughs> topped off yeah yeah and so like i didn't i ran into a snake uh boss oh and no that was hard. half that was health hard boss. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i was like oh shoot so I actually had to reload further back yeah. because I needed to make sure I had my health back um, right. and, and enough potions, whatever. I was like, oh my gosh. So then yeah. like, I, just, I made sure I was like topped off. And I did have to do that too. I had to change my lineup as well mm -hmm. to make sure I had certain people in my party yep. and with the right, you know, weakness. Like, yeah, material, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, honestly, it's, it's really everything I wanted out of you know, the remake of the first one, but they couldn't do, right? And I get that. Mm -hmm. um, so, to me, I'm like, lo already looking forward to the last one, um, you know, third one, the final one, uh, because I can only imagine what they're going to do with that play, right? Because if this is a, such an improvement over the last one, and they improve it even more, I mean, they're going to be yeah. eating good, and honestly, this is kind of like where I think the direction of Final Fantasy should go, right? Where it's like, half real time, half, you know, turn-based combat menu selection and they give you yeah they give you that option too, like classic mode or whatever yeah. to make it even more well, yeah 
the old uh, school style. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's absolutely worthy uh, of all the scores it's gotten, uh, and I oh. hope you know, they're awarded for that piece. Yeah, yeah definitely. Sounds, it's it's like... a spectacle. Like, it is, like, it's everything I said, and if you listen to the movie cast, like how Dune is mm -hmm. what you go to the movies for, that type of movie. This is, like, a big-budget game. This is what you expect from a big-budget game, and like everything that is put they put into it and the production value, the graphics, the voice acting, the the yep. even the UI, like the menus and things, just like the ease of use and like the you you um just how it feels is just it feels good to play it and doesn't nothing's getting in your way when yeah. you're playing the game. And the one thing I really want to highlight is they actually have so many mini games. I don't know if you guys really remember um some of the mini games in Final Fantasy over the years. But like mm -hmm. I think I've probably done six or seven already in the game. So you have like uh, Queen's Blood, which is the card game, card game which yeah. I actually really like. Um, it's 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 very simple but very like rewarding. Yeah, I'm like God. Like there are times when like the enemy just wrecks me on their last turn. Like oh, I didn't really see this coming. Um, they have one where it's like <laughs> uh, the characters will turn into like. Um, the PS1 polygonal models, right? Or, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, like they look, and they even, like they're aware of it. They're like, what the hell is going on? And like, they're like, why do I look like this? Um, but they have like this like pseudo real-time strategy type game uh, where you have to drop units and advance on the enemy base and destroy their commander and stuff like that. So that's been fun. Um, there's straight up a Fall Guys level where like they have that, you're on a circle, circular uh, ledge and they have like these spinning you know, uh, beams and you have to dodge them and stuff like that. Um, but they've been really good diversion and just, you know, varying up the gameplay a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's been cool. satisfying. Awesome. All right. Uh, and Chuckleboy races? Of course. Yeah. Gotta be there. One of the first things uh, you do. Yeah, one of the first things you do. Gotta be there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mike, Mike, how's Like a Dragon? Did you finish it? I finished, yes, the main story. And I, right now I'm doing some mop up of like the side content and the premium adventure mode. Um, 80 to 90 hours, I think I have in it. Oof. I will not um, be that finish. I will not be that far. I, but go. So okay. I see why the ending was divisive, and I. It's not like bad. It's not like Mass Effect 3, but it's not good either. Mm. I think it's. Considering how long everything is, and long winded some of the monologues in this game are. The ending is rather like, abrupt. abrupt. Okay. Yeah, and uh, doesn't quite give you answers to a, a couple things you wanted it to. Um, is it just like and, uh, not but... narratively satisfying, or you're just like, oh, like nothing really happened? Uh, well, that's why, because at some point, I think I will play this game. <laughs> I mean, it's so, like it's just. A lot of the momentum sort of peaked earlier, but mm. then there was some. There's something else that you're still like curious about, and you don't get necessarily an answer to that. Um, so like clearly like sequel bait again. Is, yeah. Okay. Sounds like. Yes and no. I mean, uh, it's just uh, whatever. It, it just like <laughs> it's abrupt, like like narratively abrupt. Okay. Um, because like one you you do this isn't really a spoiler. This happens in almost every Yakuza game. Uh, one of the uh, final fights, actually the final fight, it's preceded by a very long monologue where a villain tells us stuff we already know. Mm -hmm. and, and then after no, that, like, like we the first one get is much that too. resolution whatsoever to like a few things. The things just oh, okay, so it's like kind of like you beat the villain. It's like cool, like let's go home. Right. And credits. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I don't know. Yeah, sort of. I mean, there's 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 more stuff, but it's not. Things are glossed over. It's just weird. It's just it wasn't. And then there's a, an interesting choice. There, there's interesting choices for both protagonists at the end that uh, people might argue with. Um, but so I mean, overall, I like the game more than I thought I would, especially early on. But but the oh, beginning I'm at that and point. the end, beginning yeah. and the end are sort of if you with with me now for you. I don't know how much you're going to like the turn in the middle, Jim. I love the turn in the middle because we'll see. I like um, you. Well, I uh, uh, I am at uh, Animal Crossing Island, and uh, I've had about enough. I've had about enough of these middle uh, these these mini games in this game. Like, I'm sorry, but I I, I, I bought I your game. I like. I'm going to complain about this game because I don't hate it, but I will tell you that this is 
like over full. Like there's just it, there there's no reason there is no reason to have a game that has this much other game in it. Like why why do I have to play Animal Crossing what? in this game? Go play Animal Crossing. I mean, it's fantastic what it does. How much you, do you have to do? I you have to you have to play it. You, I couldn't just skip it. Yeah, you, you do you do end up there. You have to like. Yeah. I don't know. There, there is a way that you could just leave. Like when you get to like one side of the beach, you could just leave. Yeah, but you but still got to play for like. I'm still, I'm still cleaning up do, shit across my way. I, I have to you play just it. Have to do a little bit there. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any interest in, in you know. I don't want that. Five like board. the Pokemon game, that I was able to skip a lot of. I had to play one of the fights oh, for. Yeah, you do that. Those are, yeah. those are, I actually did just finish in the premium adventure. I finished the Pokemon one. So I just, like, that was fun. <laughs> Just How many play Pokemon. Are you talking about? Just play Pokemon. What? I'm sorry. Just hours? play Pokemon. How many? How many Go hours on. do you have to do with it? The oh, the island. Play. I've not, I, not not multiple. Maybe one at the most. Okay. You're yeah. complaining about one hour, Jim? I, I'm I at the one hour I mean, mark, so I'm not, almost done. It's not. It's not fun if you don't want to play it at all. You don't want to play an it. Hour. That's Literally, you're it's, like cleaning up trash. Basically, here's let me tell you guys. Let me tell you what the problem I have with this game right now is. The story for me was just picking up. Just picking up. I feel like this game has taken forever to get to what it wants me to do. Like, I feel like this game started off with the nostalgia of the first game and how much I liked it. And I gave it credit. I gave it a. Uh, I gave it some leeway to build me into its story. Like, I was like, because early on, I'm like, I don't think this is that impressive. I don't think what story what they're trying to tell me right now is I'm not that hooked on it. But you know what? I like the first game so much. I'm gonna give them that little leeway. And then, like, I'm starting to get a little hooked on the story in Chapter 6. Like, I get to the end of Chapter 5. It was a cool ending. I'm, like, getting into this idea of what's happening. And then, like, nope, stop. Stop. You got to do something you don't even want to do. And it has nothing to do with story. But that's, and you got to play the game. That's, like, a staple of Yakuza. No. They, you, I didn't have to do that in, like, a dragon. You, you rarely get stuck there. You might get, like, an introduction. But you do kind of get stuck on that island for a little bit. And... You know, I gave it I gave it a try and you know I did go back like one time and nope. get it to like a certain nope. level but nope. it wasn't I mean I don't know I, I'm not obviously playing it but like I think I think this is one of the times Sega should be commended about putting so much game into a game rather than just I, I don't think so because I think it takes away from the game but no, like, it, I mean, it takes it, away from yeah, the game it doesn't it wouldn't you're the first person I've heard complain it. about it really I know that and I'm sure I'm like one of the few I'm sure of it I'm just telling you from my point of view it takes away from the game Okay, I'm sorry, that's, that's the way it is. It wouldn't matter as much if it, you weren't actually stuck there. And yes, if I could just leave. Once that, like, now, I thought oh, yeah, it was going to intro me. I thought it was going to intro it and then say, okay, now you can go. No, I'm like, I can't leave yet. I'm like, what the, what the hell? I mean, if you skip through some dialogue and just walk to the I did. you probably can leave. Uh, I, it's not necessarily where you started. It, there's one of the beaches. You find a dolphin and it'll take you back. <laughs> Thank God. I'll look for that dolphin. Um, so. so yeah, you got to get to set the chapter seven ish or eight though for the. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, so I'll move it along. But all right, yeah. But, that's that's uh, so, yeah. pretty much it for me. Go on, Mike. Yeah, so I I played that. I'm I'm in the the premium adventure, running out of things to do. Um, I'm not gonna okay. go back to Dondoku Island though. I don't care about that. Fuck that place. But uh, I also you know I I strapped in and played a little Hell Divers. Oh, I was gonna ask well. you guys any Hell Diver mm -hmm. plays. Now, that I much this week. Oh, I couldn't. I haven't, Mike? Been able to, I haven't been able to play with anyone I know. I've yeah. Mm -hmm. randoms, the randoms are fine. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, I, but like, it's just fine. Like, yeah. I need, I'm about ready to play with people I know. Because, I, I mean, I'm just level six. I'm not far. But It, it does remind mm -hmm. me of like, how the, as as we got older, like earlier on, it was so much easier to the game with friends. And then as everybody gets their own like schedules going on as we're all older here. And it's like, make, it reminds you how hard it is to, 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 oh, to find a group. the opposite schedule of us. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, no. I you know, like you guys messaged the other night that you're ready to play. And I didn't see it until I was like, I think I was asleep already. But I, I you know, I mean, like I was like, I was out. I was out already. I was, in a, uh, I was out that night uh, at a festival. So I was like, crap, you know. Um, but uh it's cool. I do want to play with with you guys on the, on one of the a couple of missions and, and get that experience. Yeah. Um, no, no, I think that would be cool. It's definitely the stra stratagems yeah. are what separate this game from everything else. I'm I'm not necessarily a fan of how foggy everything always is, but I guess that's just a necessity based on how they spawn stuff. Fog? Um, oh, I yeah. I mean, well, feather my cat. is a weather dust, aspect, but dust, it's not dust or fog. Like you can't yeah. see like very far at all. I think it depends on. It depends there's on like a. Yeah, I was gonna say the planet, and also there's like a, there's weather conditions. 
there's a event event type timer things that's like oh it's cold this time and it or it's going to be foggy this time so you might have just had some bad patches of that cuz i don't think it's it's not, regulate it's foggy it at all. won't be foggy this time i have yeah. encountered the fog that's not that bad rain is the worst one yeah rain you won't fucking see shit and, until something's in your face yeah and, and they're um they're uh introducing vehicles right yeah yeah vehicles and a mech apparently we're getting mech, a mech. Yep. The cadence that they're trying to stick with is uh, just epic treat every month for cast of cool. new content. That's a pretty big content addition right there. Like I was like shocked to see that being added. It's a whole new dynamic into the game, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, I think it's much needed, but oh, especially with, I mean that's the yeah. one big downfall of it is like you have to run everywhere right now, which is yeah. like a lot of times I'm just like I don't feel like running across the map right now. Like let's just go. Like yeah, yeah we mm-hmm. can get a couple extra samples, but like it's not worth the time, right? I'm not gonna spend ten minutes to get two samples. No. Yeah. Let's just fucking go. So yeah, well, that's cool though. Um, no, uh, yeah, so... they're they're doing really well. Um, Matt Piscatella was having a conversation with um, your mate is Christopher Sprung or something in Europe. He's one of the guys that usually gives us um, UK uh, sales numbers and stuff like that. And he's also like, yeah, Hell Divers increased again week over week to like from week one to week two is increased, and from week two to week three it was selling more in week two, which sold more in week one, which is like, this never happens here. Like, <laughs> that's This is, right, week one is usually the peak and then yeah. everything kind of peters out from there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know, let's see. I heard that, that this was a, this is a, not, this is not a Sony-owned studio at this moment it, yet, right? No, this is a Sony published game. I heard, I heard Arrowhead was on the, it's going to be acquired. That's a rumor I heard that it'll be acquired by Sony I think soon. It's bullshit. I think it's bullshit. But we'll see. I hope so. I mean, the the way, because, so the, the fa- the co-founder who's on Twitter and actually posts a pretty decent yeah. amount, uh, the way yeah. he's responded to things, it says we are independently owned and stuff like that. Which, yeah, sure, it could happen. I won't say no, but like, I think if he if it were to happen, he would just not say things like that and just yeah, I got gotcha. you. You know, whatever. Um, All right. Because uh, I mean, the last game they worked on was Hell Divers One, so you know, um, they're good at their very niche thing and. Uh, you know, the thing is, like, honestly, you know, getting back into the acquisition thing, uh, you know, what's the what's the point of Sony owning them, right? Like, if they have a good working relationship, hey, you're going to be our Helldivers team. Like, you don't need to buy them for that, right? Like, Nintendo has a, co- a couple studios that work exclusively with them. They don't own them. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, hey, you make games for us, and that's cool, you know? But uh, we don't need to outright buy you because your company culture is way different than ours, and, mm-hmm. you know, we don't need to manage that aspect of the studio. We just need to... We just need you to make fucking games for us. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I think it'd be a spit in the face, right? If they just laid off all those employees and were like, <sighs> we're buying a studio, guys. It's like. Yeah. That's the, I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we we'll shut see. down this studio to buy this studio. We right? talked about this last week, getting into these the studio layoff conversations. And we had another one, I think, in between this podcast and the last one, right? We had a. EA. Uh, EA. Thank you. 670, I think. 670 employees, I think. Or 607. One of those. It's in the news. Pretty it's in the news, yeah. I know. I'm gonna. I'm flipping through. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, but that wasn't my next one. I was gonna talk about. But yes. Uh, so they lost five percent, six hundred seventy of its employees. Um, they're gonna focus. Are they, is this one of the companies that are gonna focus less on? They're gonna more focus internally on IPs, not on licenses, right? We were talking about that a little bit. Um, so that's gonna be their new strategy. We have other news to talk about too. And other companies thinking this too. But um, not licenses, but big games. So EA is going to reduce its scope, right? So I guess we got some canceled Mandalorian first-person shooter game. That was done. I heard that was axed from this whole thing. And that was supposed Uh, to be done by um, uh, Respawn. Sorry. Respawn. Yeah, Respawn was supposed to be working on that. They still are working on their Jedi Jedi Survivor. Survivor. Yeah. Um, so what else we got from this this release? So we had the, the layoffs, which sucks. We got the cancellation of a game, which sucks. We got the uh, wants to build its own IPs, but like right now they don't have a lot to stand on because their sports games are they they are what they are. Man sells them like crazy, obviously, but like what other games Triple A have they released that were their own recently? I have posted a bunch. So well, I, I know I know that. that is... Well, Dragon Age is oh. that's what I'm saying. Dragon Age is in development hell right now. 
Well, right? apparently we were getting it this year. So, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, we'll the see. thing is they announced it way soon. And again, I think it was just, hey, we're recruiting for the new Dragon Age game. So if you want to work on the new Dragon Age game, come to EA, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but they have their sports studio. They have Respawn. Sports still. always make good. Yeah, sport, the sports games sell. We know that. We know that. No, I know that. But they have Respawn. They have Respawn, which is working on, hopefully this will free up Titanfall 3. Well, there's a rumor Maybe. about that, that there is a new game in the universe, but it will not be a Titanfall game. So I don't know what that means exactly. I don't mm. know how much I, I don't like that. take stock in that. <laughs> More Apex like that. Legends. Apex like Legends that. 2. But... <laughs> Like you know, they have they're obviously working on the next Mass Effect game, but that doesn't exist yet. So, and that's such a far ways away. We've talked about how long away that game is. So, I mean, hopefully they they do surprise us with Dragon Age this year. That would be cool. Uh, I just, you know, I feel like they've. <laughs> what are they releasing? Because they've brought in so many licensed games, and that's been their thing for a while. And it's like, what are they? What do we have from them now? Like you know, that's what I'm trying to think. Step back to see it. Uh, because it's sure their stuff was sprinkled in, but the licensed games were their like their big releases, and it's like that's what you're always thinking about, uh, like the Star Wars games, and which they didn't really do much of, uh, the Marvel games, which again they didn't do much of. Well, I mean, uh, the thing is, they have a couple Marvel games in development right now. They do. Which they, so they I have, thought they were they have the Captain possibly, America though. Black Panther. Yeah. Games. Which but I was I heard one of those one and, of, I heard one of those was canceled. And they too also have this. the Iron Man game. Maybe one of those. Exactly. One of the three. Oh, one. No. Hmm. Well, no, one the of the Captain three America was and Black Panther is one game. One game, yes. Okay, so one of them I, I heard was not going to be released. That's why I heard they. But I maybe that's that that's both of those not confirmed. Were going to be released. We're safe, we'll see. So. We'll see. Hmm. I mean, uh, it's whatever. Like this is just not what you want to hear, but whatever. It's it's okay. the equivalent of Disney right now. Like all these studios are, you know, whether it's video games or whether it's movies. Everybody is in like survival mode right now, right? Because I know, I know. You know, every so you have pre-pandemic where business as usual, right? You have the pandemic where everybody kind of boomed because digital entertainment was the Nobody only thing else that was do anything really else. safe to yeah. do, right? And now we're in post-pandemic where you know the economy is kind of shitty, you know, for a lot of places worldwide, uh, and you know just people are doing other things, right? Where they that's it they projected that this growth from the pandemic which would continue which clearly it didn't and i don't know why these fucking studio heads thought it would um so they're just in a retraction period and they want to take safe bets right and again you know just like um square enix with avengers and i'm sure you know um ea with star wars those star wars games probably cost uh, i'm not sure if it was public but they must have spent a lot of fucking money getting because remember it was a 10-year deal remember Mm-hmm. Like we talked about, it, and I think what we're in year seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, it's getting point? close to yeah. the end. It's getting, it's getting close. close to the end, oh. and I'm pretty sure that they did not get the return on investment on those because for the first what the first five years, all they had to show was Battlefront one and Battlefront two, right? The second of all, which is infamous now for you know how poorly received that was, and then after that, that's when they finally got some traction with the uh, Jedi uh, survivor survivor. Um, Fallen Order. Fallen Order, thanks. Yeah. I was like, Fallen Order. Fallen Order. Order. Fallen Order. Yeah. And then they had that Rogue Squadron game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if they're canceling that Mandalorian game, which apparently wasn't supposed to be the Mandalorian, it was supposed to be a Mandalorian game. A Mandalorian, Mandalorian yeah. Game. yeah. First person. They, yeah. Man- they managed to cancel that, which makes me think, like, yeah, they, they're not happy with how much these fucking licenses cost. And if we just want to cite um, the Insomniac hack, where they, you know, Disney yeah. slash Marvel wanted $100 million right off the bat for Spider Man. Yeah. How much do you think fucking Star Wars cost? Like it had to have been sure. around that much, right? You more, know, at more. least for one game, right? Let alone a ten-year deal. We're talking probably like a billion dollars yeah. or something like that. Yeah, could have been. You're right. You're just not so, making I mean, the money. You're just not no, making the and, money. No, and then things. just to tie this together with the Warner Brothers announcement, uh, Warner Brothers is going the way of Konami. It sounds like with going less AAA games and more uh, mobile live service games. Uh, I I feel like this is a tough. Statement to make as a company, to especially considering what's happened in the last like twelve months, it's the opposite. It's like they learned the opposite lesson that any logical person would see when they see Hogwarts Legacy. You know, Triple A. I mean, I don't know how Triple A really. I mean, it's big, right? It's but... it was a very good game too. Yeah, they did a great job. Yeah, with that game. sure. And it's like their best-selling game. It actually beats Call of Duty for once, and 
uh, for like that the year. Best selling game of the year, out. yeah. 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 And then and then Suicide Squad comes out as a total dumpster fire. There's like ten people playing it at once online. Uh, and so their the lesson they learned is oh, but what if Hogwarts had like continued revenue? Yeah, this is the same strategy every that studio the, goes that through. Was the lesson they so this was this was the lesson that people learned. Like, was it how long ago? Five years ago, we were talking about this with our studios, and they all went through this, and it didn't work. Like, you can't just build a live service game. You, I mean, it's so hard to hit that, you know, hit that to thread that needle, um, to hit the right one that's going to make you money. There's so many flops that go in between, and you know, I feel like this strategy is just, I mean, such a reactionary strategy to one game that just has obviously they said was not reached sales expectancy, which we knew it, we knew it. Um, but then you had the number one game last year, right? Yeah, which was, yeah. Listen, want to move away from like you're not hurting. You just sold. I mean, you shouldn't be if you sold that many of that. I mean, who knows? Licensing. Maybe you're right. Maybe licensing was crazy for that game. But like, I don't know. I just I feel like this is such a drastic move from a stu for a studio to make after selling the number one game last year to this flop. You know? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I mean, the thing is. These people have to say things that are PR friendly, right? It, it probably was a PR person or at least somebody that was trained by PR. My assumption here, my assumption, is that they have a bunch of live service games that are still in development, right? Suicide Squad was the first one mm. that made it out the door. And they got to be like, yeah, this is our strategy, guys. And just put on a bold face, right? Okay. Because here, yeah. here's how it is in, in the video game industry for the unfortunate part, right? With game development taking so long, you know, you're talking four, five, six, six years, right? Yeah. On some of these games. So you see something like Destiny come out. You see something like Fortnite come out, and you're like, shit, we need one of those, right? We need a I Destiny, know. right? Yeah. Guys, get on a Destiny game, right? And it's like, Everybody okay, wants great. one. Everybody in 2017 wanted to be playing a Destiny-type game, right? I'm saying it's like five years ago we went through right, this. exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. So, like, now all these live service games were probably ordered around that 2017 2018 period right and now come 2023 2024 moving into 2025 gotcha. at the end of the year now these games are finally going to be released yeah but the and market has changed right we moved on yeah where yeah. it's like you have your winners right the winners fortnite apex legends the staples you yeah. know yeah which the and matt piscadell has talked about in a recent tweet when um he did the last mtv things these are the winners right where it's like you're not just competing for people's like attention anymore. It's you have to be better than Fortnite. You have to be more addicting than Fortnite. You have to be, you know, like it's not just you That's that has to play more. Fortnite. You have to get yeah. your friends to fucking come over and play that, right? Because if you and yeah, your friends are group. playing this one game, yeah. right? And yep. there, you, you got to convince three, four, five other friends to join you in this other game, right? And that just yeah. is a hard thing to do, especially when you have right five years. Imagine investing five years into Fortnite, right? Whatever battle pass money you spend on that, whatever cosmetics you earn, now it's like there's people like that's the only game they play. Squad? It's like there's fuck no, yeah, fuck no, right? And you know, especially um, what was I gonna say? Like it's just such a risk, right? Yeah. Because by the time you come out, the market has changed already, and I imagine we'll probably see another one or two, right? Because and even last year or two years ago with um, Gotham Knights, right? That had. Like, weird, like, hey, was this supposed to be a yeah. games and service type thing? Like, who knows? You know, question mark, question mark, question yeah. mark, and stuff like that. So yeah. it's just, it's Almost weird. And, it was, and Warner Brothers is posturing themselves, right, for the future because, you know, and that's why they worked on Mortal Kombat 1 instead of moving to, like, Unjustice 3 or something like that um, in the event that they wanted to sell the studios and stuff like that. Where, yeah. you know, if, yeah. if, again, if they want to work on it. <laughs> Uh, Hogwarts Legacy 2 or whatever like that, which is what you think they want to do. Like, oh shit, we sold 20 million copies of this. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, who knows what the health of Warner Brothers overall is going to be, right? And if you have a trip, yeah. a studio of hundreds of people working on a game and you're trying to sell yourself, right? It's like, oh, by the way, you want to buy our company? Well, you got to deal with this fucking studio that could lose money. Like, who knows? Maybe Hogwarts Legacy was a flash in the pan and the sequel is going to fucking do... Half the numbers, yeah. right? You don't, because you don't know. It's a, you it have always the numbers, right? That sounds great. Yeah. 10 million copies. But like, it's like, oh, well, we tripled our budget. The numbers, again, don't add up. They don't make sense always, in the end. Always a gamble. Yep. Gotcha. So, all right. Uh, what else do we have in the news? We've got that one done. Let's see. We've got 
Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake developer, Saber Interactive, has reportedly left, as this has this been finished now, the parent company Embracer, in a $500 million deal to become privately owned. So they, uh, well, and, and, I heard the game, and I heard the game is still in development. They didn't cancel this game. Who knows? Who knows? It's still happening. That's Who what knows? I heard. I'm sure but they bought themselves out. Hope. To buy themselves. There's still hope is what it means. $500 million bought themselves out of Embracer. What a nightmare that must have been for them. That company. Well, but it's the butt of a joke that that company really is. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, um, oh, Churro chimed in here. Thank you for chiming in, Churro. Having a pre-established fan base helps, but that still is a lot of drama attached to it. I don't know if higher budget would mean more. I bet it will be the same fan base, the same amount of people. Yeah. I mean, you don't you don't find AAA game sequels really usually doing something like half. That would be like a cat a catastrophe but i guess yeah i mean the thing for me is like but you could you could gamble that it's going to be more i'm sorry just i don't want to like you could gamble that because if you think about it like now the word of mouth is out how good the first game was if you hit it with a second game you're drawing more people and that's the hope right the hope is that you're getting people look at, that look at what, look at what Hilda Hilda one to two. bought pre-owned and now you're getting all those people day one instead well divers two is an mm -hmm. obviously an odd one out but it's an example i can use right now because it's fresh it the first game obviously didn't sell like crazy, uh, but it was I remember my cousin saying how much enjoy, how enjoyable the game was. It was really good, and then this Hell Divers two game came out and just took the world by storm. So you can make a sequel to a game and do even better. Um, so I don't well, know. I mean, so the thing is, I was being mm. hyperbolic with the half. All right, I'm just painting a worst case scenario. Right? It's like who knows? Mm. Like maybe that pent up demand for a Harry Potter's game of the last twenty years was met, right? I, I doubt it, right? I doubt it if they improve the system. Also, Hell Divers isn't costing hundreds of millions. I, mean, I, I know, I know, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, again, we just have to look up at Sony two weeks ago, right? You have Insomniac, who made Spider-Man yeah. 1, their best-selling first-party game of all time at that point, right? And then, you know, five, here we are, five, six, six years later, with Spider-Man 2, becomes the fastest best-selling, you know, 10 million units yep. in, in less than four months, and they still get laid off. So, yeah. What are you yeah. supposed to do? So, like failure That's it. guarantees layoffs, but success doesn't guarantee you you're not well, going to have layoffs either. So well, they security. usually do. There's no security in success. No security I mean, in, this in this in, yeah, in this industry, if you when when you release a game is usually when you have layoffs because you're done and you don't keep that much staff on anymore as you used to. Like that has historically always happened in the industry. The difference now has been you're getting layoffs you know during development like crazy because they can't afford to have the people on the staff that is like you're not overstaffing you're understaffing now and you're working more so like that's the difference but you've always historically always had people that have been laid off contracted employees for the for the job well sure you're always you know, going to have you know you're going to have the contractors and stuff like that but when you, your best studio arguably the best studio in your fucking portfolio you know works on these games gets them out gets them out on time you know or like no delays and stuff like that and then you're like, yeah, we, like, and something had to, like, they even released PR on Twitter. So, yeah, unfortunately, you know, we're having to deal with a difficult time right now. Like, that's not a good sign, man. Like, that is atypical of what happens. It's not just like, oh, a bunch of contractors left and they're on to the next thing or something like that. It, that's like, leads are gone. Like, this is going to be bad for the company. And, like, honestly, anybody looking forward to Wolverine or Spider-Man 3, like, I would be worried right now. Honestly. Yeah. Absolutely. Because those games are going to be worse because of that. So, yeah. anyway, just, just tie this back in with EA and Warner Brothers. It's in. just a bad yep. time for everybody because all these studios are in panic mode. They're trying to, you know, rein in their spending, right? And, then, I mean, I didn't post it on this. Rockstar is calling back all their employees back to the office um, oh, for the right. last, yeah, you know, the last, yeah, the last push segment. Yeah. And they're worried about, you know, more security leaks, more breaches and stuff like that. Um, so, it's just, again, it's just... It's just all for the industry. And Blizzard did the same thing. Like, uh, the WoW team released an entire expansion in the pandemic period. And then Mikey Barr, before fucking, you know, Microsoft bought them out, was like, hey, everybody yeah. back to the office. And they used it as an excuse because they knew a lot of people had, you know, purchased homes or whatever. And it's like, I can't come back to the office now. Like, what's like, oh, well, guess sucks to quit. Like, yeah, <laughs> they just take advantage of the employees. Like, the industry is just so fucked right now. And we're just seeing it now. We're just seeing it. It's going to get worse this year. I guarantee it. I know. Um, like yeah, other news. It's going to be bad. By the end of the uh, year, yeah. Rocksteady, oh, yeah. I, I guarantee it. No, uh, do, we, do we think Rocksteady lasts this year? No, I, mean, I don't think the studio is going to close because they're just too big and 
Pucci. Yeah. I mean, look, he yeah. didn't even shut down Bioware they after back to back failures. So true. Well, I mean, those those failures were like tempered by decent sales. I think with Bioware, like like also Bioware's made more than just a single franchise too. Whereas yeah, Rock Rocksteady just made, like, made one franchise and now that's it. All yeah. I'm saying is, like, if any yeah. other studio had gone from Mass Effect Andromeda to Anthem, they'd be closed down. 100%. That's they'd be closed they down. Had, they had, the amount of money they, they, they blew away. Yeah. Dragon Age mm-hmm. stuff, I think, in between that sold okay, I thought. What? Dragon Age stuff in between, didn't they? Some it was stuff there? Last Dragon Age was Inquisition. That was, like, I think that, sold, that was the game of, game of the year that year. Yeah, that but was that was way before, before, that was before yeah, those games I just yeah, and Jamin and Anthem were the latest. No, no, it was before no. them. It was right. It was before them. Anthem was huge failure. So yeah. All right. Uh, what else we got in the news? Oh, uh, Gearbox talking about Gearbox possibly leaving Embracer as well, or being bought to another studio, or buying themselves out. Essentially, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the, we don't know the the fate of them yet, but something is happening. I think next week, according to Randy Pitchford. Yeah, apparently um, Randy had an all hands on deck town hall meeting or something like that, just giving people an update. And again, this is. This is, a, this is the state, and we've seen with Embracer over the past month, two months, that they can't be trusted to fucking, you know, deliver on the things that they said they were going to do, which is, you know, be a gigantic publisher. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, just like that other studio that just bought themselves out in a five hundred mo- half a billion dollar fucking deal, uh, everybody at Gearbox is like, yep, we need to do something about this before we just close down, right? Like, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to worry about that 100%. Now, what I will so. have to say... If Sega has the chance to do the funniest thing, the funniest thing, if oh, Sega man. were to buy Gearbox and fire that would be hilarious. Pitchford, that would be oh, the funniest God. thing. Because, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, Randy Pitchford and Gearbox got a lot of money from Sega back in the day to do Aliens Colonial Marines. And while they did make Aliens Colonial Marines, they used a lot of that money to develop the Borderlands franchise, right? Because... Yeah, Borderlands yeah. would not exist without uh, that Colonial Marines money. Right. Yep. And, I mean, from a business perspective, I get it because they're like, Aliens is a licensed game. Like, there's no real point for us to make a great licensed game. Whereas we are incentivized to, you know, make a very good game of an IP that we own, right? Right. So I'm just saying, Sega, like, oh man, if somebody from Sega was like bitter and they're just like, I, I, I hate yeah, purchase, the grudge I hate, this whole time. Uh, a five hundred million dollar hate purchase. The funniest thing too about <laughs> Colonial Marines, and I play, I beat that game. Yeah, because you lost a bet to that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but uh, that game, like, there was like a line, a single line of code that some guy oh, found. Oh, I forgot that. Yes, that was like caused AI to be like derpy. so terrible, like dirt. Yeah, yeah. it's like, and the people are like, why is this AI so bad in this game? And it was because of a single line of code somebody missed. They, they just there's like some missed this typo in it and the guy found it fixed it and it like changed the game like it didn't make it a good it. game but the ai was just like infinitely better like you would just stand in front of the alien and it wouldn't attack you or something like that i remember yeah. like seeing videos at the time and stuff like that yeah. so, yep. i'm just saying um, if i were sega or if i were one of the execs at sega that you know randy pitcher did it to, i would fucking do that i'd be like <laughs> i'd be like okay guys we are buying fucking oh, gearbox we have uh, one well, we have a billion dollars to spend on this company <laughs> yeah exactly. i think i'd embrace or bought them for like two billion dollars Mm, they're not getting that. They're, they're not, not getting, getting that. that. <laughs> no, um, yeah. So, uh, and lastly, I've got uh, Neil Druckmann talking about how many, he's not sure how many games he's got left in this uh, in this Neil world. Druckmann. He's only released two. Well, he's been a part of a lot. What are you talking about? I think he's he likes only released two. I mean, The Last of Us and Last of Us. Uncharted 4 is big. On oh, he was part of Uncharted 4? Was, huge, was, yeah. he, was mm-hmm. he part of Uncharted 4? Yeah. He was, okay. he was, he was, he was on like... He took over from Amy Henning. Amy, well, he she, he took over for the game. Like I, right. I gave her the Amy Henning. Amy Henning, I gave more credit because like three quarters of the game was done when she, when he took over. I thought. And then he changed but, like the whole bunch of it. Yeah. But I didn't realize that. But I will tell you that like I feel like well his games are and like he was such he was a part of all the other Uncharted games too. Yeah. Well, Not that like he, was, he just wasn't, wasn't a director. Or he moved no. up to the company. He yeah. moved up. Yeah. 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 I mean, like his 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 associate obviously. Was it Bruce Daly? Staley? Yeah. Uh, just left after the first game was burnt out. So now he's starting to feel the burnout as well. And it's, you know, it happens clearly. I mean, it's unbelievable that, like, you know, Miyamoto and, and, and these other, like, 
people like stay in this industry as long as they have i mean obviously they have a different market at least i guess you know working on their games but right. it's unbelievable that like so when you, you make know, games that are lighthearted and fun I guess that's really what it is. Too, instead of well, then, making games that are just beating you down. What like, about Kojima? Kojima's still doing games. Is he no. though? Is he? <laughs> we'll Thank you. I was just Again, like, like yeah, I guess. Dr- like, I see a little bit of dr- him with Drucken where he'd rather be making movies. Yeah, no, absolutely. It seems like Drucken got a taste of Hollywood and would rather do that. That's oh, what it yeah. sounds like. Absolutely. Me. I mean, I, I really think he enjoyed doing The Last of Us show instead. Yeah. And I guarantee you, he's rubbing elbows with celebrities over the show rather than you know mm-hmm. everything both the games did. He's, like, he's got con- he's got context. I barely have to yeah. do much of anything with this. It yeah, just happened. exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> I, again, I can't blame him, right? You got to get your bread somehow, and uh, you know it's highlighted again. I'll, I'll cite Jason Schreier's uh, first book, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, where they talk about this, and they talked about Bruce getting burnt down on yeah, I think a little story about it or whatever. It, it was, was Last of Us, Last of Us, yeah. where you know it's like you literally you're ar- 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 kind of killing yourself over a couple of years especially during the crunch mm-hmm. period with like 60 70 hour work weeks and stuff like that you know like, get, like renting out apartments that are five minutes away or whatever right, so it you is, can or... spend more time at the office instead of like and instead of mm-hmm. commuting and that's fine when you're you know young and single and whatnot but like when you're middle age now and you have kids and that's what he said he's like i want to focus on my kids because you know mm-hmm. they're not going to be around you know in the house much longer and stuff like that so it's like yeah i I don't blame the guy but again it just goes to show that like when you have your most talented people that are like yeah i'm done right because i mean like at his age he should still be in the industry right like you point out yeah absolutely yeah his mind his mind should still be creating stuff in this industry absolutely absolutely and and the thing is like like i'm 40 something uh, late 40s early something like that um a little older than us but you know uh, jim i'm glad you brought up in the come thing because one of uh the things that came out during the Super Mario Wonder uh, interview ar- around its marketing press releases 46. and stuff like that. 46. 46, yeah. 46. A little older. Um, was that the staff that worked on Super Mario Wonder, like, I think they said, like, out of the people that worked on Super Mario Brothers 1, like the first Mario Brothers game, like, I think, like, 90-something percent of them were, like, still around with the company and helped make Mario Wonder. Well, that, that's, that's crazy that's to think about. That's incredible. Right? Like, yeah, that's 40, incredible. You're 40 years, right? And That's absolutely incredible. Yes. And it just goes to show, like, you know, I, again, I, I get studios do the things that they want to do, right? And, and what they think is going to sell well and stuff like that. But when you're doing these triple A big budget games, it has a toll, right? It has, it has an absolutely. absolute toll on you. Whereas, like, literally with Mario Wonder, they're like, hey, guys, work on a Mario game. No deadline. Just whenever you're finished, we'll release it. Yep. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Remember last year, this time, when we were like, why isn't there a new 2D Mario or 3D Mario game yeah. to tie yeah. in with the movie, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. if there were any other studio, they probably wouldn't like, guys, push this out the door. Push this out the fucking door right now because we need to fucking sell systems and games. And it's like, eh, we'll release it at the end of the year. It's fine. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. It's yeah, just, they have that luxury. Yeah. But exactly. even like the Zelda, even the Zelda development over there was... Yeah, they delayed it like an entire year just to yeah, fucking do so. polish and bug fixing and stuff. Like that. It, but again, it just it this just all feeds back into the the industry is the triple A industry is not sustainable. It's not working, uh, and especially uh, with with me, um, Druckman here, especially, I guarantee you he probably had to have some tough conversations with with the uh, SEI like the higher ups there, and is like, so even if we make like a ninety plus. Metacritic yeah. game that goes on to become game of the year, right? And we all make bonuses. That's fine, but like, you're gonna still t- tell me to lay off people at the company? Like, yeah. fuck I'm that. Sure that this, I'm sure I'm still saying that. Right like, fuck that. that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that has to be part of that. This whole layoff thing had to be laying on it because it's like this came out right after that, and they're, they've had such a successful run, even with all these remasters. They all sold great. These remasters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we joke about it on this podcast, but they sell. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this. No, no, that's fine. Uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. We joke about it, yes, but it gives it's easy young, money. It's, it's also gives, easy. It's easy money. It gives the the less experienced developers something to work on, right? Because it's like, oh, hey, this is how our battle system works. This is how the map works. This is yeah. how the camera works. Okay, cool. Like, yeah, that's great. It's just, yeah, it's, it, like you said, it's unsustainable right now. We're gonna have, and the problem is, how do you go back uh, from what we've where we experienced this AAA? Like, you how know, do you, you're putting, you're back. trying to put something back in Pandora's box. And you yeah, can't you can. not I know. I know. That's, yep. I know. Like, can you imagine so. the outrage of Grand Theft Auto Six? Is like. Yeah, you know, we you just need one small area. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing as Grand Theft Auto Five, right? It's like, eh, whatever. Do you no, I, I, fucking mm-hmm. flipping shit, dude. Like if it was the size of Grand Theft Auto Three, 
right? Yeah. That's all. Like yeah. it was graphically great, but it was the size of Grand Theft Auto Three. Yeah, they would put it out. Um, so, yeah, but you, that's what I'm saying. You always have to, it's escalation. It's always building to something that's like you said, unsustainable. So, uh, I think I've got everything. Did I miss anything? I think we got it. I think we got it. All right, that's gonna wrap up the gamecast, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, we did. Uh, we will see you guys next week on Twitch live Tuesday nights eight o'clock. YouTube. All the content's over there. Subscribe. Leave us a comment over there. A thumbs up. We'd love to talk, chat with you guys. Thanks for all of you viewers uh, for tuning in. We appreciate it, guys. We're going to uh, see you next week. We are out.